Hello everybody and welcome to History Bite number 46, dated September 19, 2020. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Bite is entitled, A Tribute to Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, 1933-2020. to The passing of Justice Ginsburg unquestionably leaves a huge void at the Supreme Court of the United States. She was a tireless crusader for the equal rights of all Americans, regardless of race, religion, sexual orientation, and most importantly, gender. Though she was a small woman in physical stature, uh, Justice Ginsburg was a mighty legal force to reckon with. And even if one disagreed with her opinions, dissents, or legal positions in general, she certainly commanded the respect of detractors. Justice Ginsburg, at the time of her death at the age of 87, was the fourth longest serving justice in history in terms of age, outranked only by Justices Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., John Paul Stevens, and Roger Taney. Also at the time of her death on the current Supreme Court, she was the second longest serving member, outranked only by Justice Clarence Thomas, who was appointed two years before she was. And of course, by Chief Justice Roberts, who by virtue of being Chief Justice, uh, has, is first in the order of precedence. All right. So she sat immediately to Chief Justice Roberts' left, whereas Justice Thomas uh, sits to the immediate right of the chief, being the longest uh, serving associate justice. Her history, however, did not begin uh, when she was appointed to the Supreme Court in 1993. Prior to serving on our nation's highest court um, for 27 years, Justice Ginsburg served for 13 years as an associate judge of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia, having been named to that spot by President Carter in 1980. Thus, Justice Ginsburg presented us with 40 years in total of distinguished federal judicial service. Prior to her appointment to the federal bench at all, she had served as both a law professor and a lawyer for the ACLU, advocating for the equal rights of women. As a young woman entering into the legal profession in the 1960s, it goes without saying that she encountered a great deal of discrimination. In spite of being a very high-ranking student graduating from Columbia Law School, she found it very difficult to obtain employment a struggle also known by fellow Associate Justice Sandra Day O'Connor when she finished law school at Stanford. Okay? In those times, the, the legal profession was very, very, very male-dominated. Okay? And the mindset of most men in those eras was quite obvious. Women don't belong here. You belong in the home, cooking meals, keeping house taking care of children, not writing briefs or arguing in court, certainly not sitting on juries or on the bench. So, like Justice O'Connor, Justice Ginsburg found it hard to find work, okay? And only due to the strong uh, advocacy on her behalf uh, by other influential men in the profession was she able to land good appointments to positions. Justice Ginsburg's frame of reference, obviously, in being such a passionate advocate for women's rights, uh, was formed due to the amount of discrimination she herself had faced. Uh, and her advocacy for women's rights uh, gained her the title, the Thurgood Marshall of Women's Rights, a title that could not be more fitting for this lady. As Thurgood Marshall worked to destroy all legal barriers against the advancement of African Americans, so did Justice Ginsburg against women. Okay? She never, ever lost that passion and drive to destroy the uh, 
inhibiting factors which refused to allow women to attain equality with men. And okay? whatever form they took, she went after them, and rightly so. Before being appointed to the federal bench, Justice Ginsburg argued a number of cases before the Supreme Court of the United States, uh, winning quite a bit of them, if not all of them. I, I don't have the exact record in front of me, but she certainly had a very, very good track record uh, before the Supreme Court and had earned the respect of the all-male court uh, at the time in the 1970s. So when she was appointed to that body in 1993, she was no stranger to it by any means. Once she was on the D.C. Circuit and later the Supreme Court, Justice Ginsburg remained uh, unquestionably committed to the cause of equality for all Americans. And she was determined to hold the line for as long as she could. And she did. And for that, Justice Ginsburg, we thank you for your 40 years of distinguished federal judicial service to this nation and to the American people. Thank you for your service. And thank you all for listening to this History Bite. I appreciate all of you who take the time to listen to these segments. If you have any questions, controversies, or whatnot, do leave them in the comments below. Take care, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you at the next one.